Uh, hello everybody and welcome to your 38th C Sharp XNA tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to be learning about loading maps in real time. Uh, a good thing about loading maps in real time is that they have a lot of benefits, especially if you're uh, designing your map. So designing anything in your game, uh, it's good that if you can see the changes in real time so that it spares your development time. Uh, imagine just having to edit once you're trying to edit one map and you change one thing you have to close it down recompile it view it then change it uh, recompile it view it etc etc it kind of takes time and so loading stuff and maps and everything in real time is a, is a ben is beneficial and it could help with other things such as like if you have a tile editor if you're making a tile editor or something uh, um, loading something and loading a map with a tiler in real time can be beneficial as well. Uh, but before we get into this tutorial, there's a mistake I made in the last tutorial, and I made an annotation in the video uh, not too long ago. Uh, but uh, the v mistake was that I said if i is equal to zero, it should be if map i j is equal to zero, then the color is white, else uh, the color is black. Uh, so change that. Uh, so one thing that I showed you last uh, in a, in the first tutorial of loading maps was that I said set the copy uh, to output directory equal to copy of newer and what this did is that it, it made a copy of the map file and put it in the debug folder so that we could actually indeed locate the file because when it when it comes to C sharp when you start locating a file it will start searching for the file within the debug folder uh, and the debug folder becomes a default folder rather than the project folder so what we did is that we made a copy of the map file and put it within the uh, the project folder uh, but if we want to update the file, if we want to update the map file, the problem is that the, our map file is within our, our regular folder in our project folder, but it's not in our debug folder. So then whenever we update our map or whenever we make changes on the fly with our map, uh, whenever we change it within our regular folder, it doesn't change within our debug folder. And therefore, we have a problem because it won't show an update. Because uh, it won't show an update until we close it and then recompile the program again. Because it only makes a copy whenever we compile our program. So uh, the easiest way to, to solve this is if you want, you can go, you can go to your project folder. And um, notice how our map file is in our main project folder. What you could do is put your your map file within your debug folder. And then... If you put your map file within your debug folder, then, uh, yeah, if you put your map, uh, my, I changed my build directory, but I'll show you, uh, uh, where to put all that stuff. But if you take your map file from your debug directory, which it should be there right now, uh, and then you load it into Visual Studio, then you'll be editing the proper map file or whatever that you should be editing. So every single time you run the program, then you, you'll be editing the right file. And if you put it in the debug folder, then you don't have to set this to copy if newer. You just set it to do not copy in the build action equal to none, and everything will be cool. Right, you'll be able to whenever you edit the map, uh, it will be it will be edited in your program your programs as well. And uh, just before I forget to mention this, if we go to our map.cs, uh, to load maps on the fly, basically all we're going to be doing is going to be uh, putting our load content. So if you look in game1.cs, we're just going to be putting our load content within uh, our update function. So every single update is going to be checking for load file. So I'll take this away from now for now. So uh, no, actually I'll keep that there. So whenever we press the M key, uh, it's going to load our content. So then whenever we update something, we just have to click M and it will show us our update. Okay. And what we really should do is that we should also keep our load content within here. So then uh, we don't have to click M before it shows our map for the first time. So we just do content manager and map1.txt. So all we have to do is just put the load content in there and then it will load it on the fly. But if it's not in the debug folder, if we don't edit the map file within the debug folder, then there's a problem. 
But if you don't want to do all that, then there's a way to change the build direct directory. So then the exe file the, it will be in the same folder as your map file and your other files. So therefore, the default file, the default folder will be your project folder rather than your debug folder. So how do we do this? Uh, what we want to do is that we want to go to our solution explorer. We want to right click on our project and you go down to properties now I know you can't see it but you'll see it at the bottom so what we want to do is when we're greeted with this screen uh, you want to go to the build tab and you want to scroll down once you scroll down you will see an output path right there now it's gonna say something like bin uh, whatever debug and that would that would be your uh, this uh, your output path will look something like this so what we want is that we want it to be in our default project folder where our map file is. So if we delete that, that will give us our defaults, uh, our default folder. So if we do that and we save that, uh, and then we set our build action to none, and we set our output directory to do not copy, uh, then our map, whenever we edit our map file, is going to edit it within the game file itself. So if I was to run this one more time. So if I run this, you see the map right here, and if I say I add 200 there and I save it, nothing changes until I click the M key, and you can see the two black spots are added there. So that is uh, loading maps on the fly. So whether you want to, you don't want to change the build directory and you just want to add, uh, you could you could easily just put the map file that one text in in your in your build that in your debug folder and then uh do add existing item and then open it in here so you can edit it within the editor or you can just ch change the build directory i change the build directory because when i add uh text files and like such from here uh it normally it adds it by default to the project folder and then therefore to go through the effort of going to the project folder and putting in the debug folder it kind of can take some time so might as well just set the build target or the build uh, directory uh, to the default folder uh, so it's up to you whether you want to do it uh, do it that way and the last but not least and I think it's the absolute worst way to do it is you can put the absolute um, path so you can put like it's in the D drive slash whatever blah 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 the reason why this is the worst method is because if you if somebody installs or get your game on a different computer and they say have it installed in the E drive or something and you're searching for the D drive, uh, then there can be a problem. There is ways to get the absolute path of the image, but uh, I believe that the two methods I've showed you are the easiest and the best ways to handle it. So that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.